In this chapter is where I'm going to collect all the movies I create whenever DaVinci Resolve does an update that I think is worth talking about. And the Resolve 11.1 update is definitely worth talking about. And let's start with some user interface changes because even though it's a .1 update, they've changed a couple menu commands that I talk a lot about here in this training. And so if you're brand new to this training and you're working off of 11.1, you might be wondering where one or two commands went. I'm about to show you that. The first big one is the view menu. Let's come down to the view menu. And I talk a lot about resetting the UI interface so that you and I are both starting from the exact same place. And typically, it used to be located in the view menu all the way down in the bottom. Well, now on the bottom, they've taken a bunch of different view options and collected them into this flyout menu down here. So way down at the bottom is the reset UI layout. So if you're confused about where to find it, this is where it is. I'll go ahead and select it. And now we're back to the default UI layout. In the movie on dual screen monitors, I take you through and show you what the difference is. Well, guess what? We've got some additional controls now in dual screen support. I've got two monitors hooked up at this point. I'll go and select view. I'll come down to the user interface layout. The first thing I can do is because I've got two monitors set up, well, how do I decide which display I want DaVinci Resolve to work from? Well, I can switch this to display number two. Now, I'm not screen recording both displays, but if I switch this to display two, DaVinci Resolve has just jumped to my secondary display, leaving this display you're looking at available for something else, such as searching the web. Let's come back down to view. I'll come back to the primary display, select on display one again, and now it's back. By the same token, if I go into dual screen mode, I can turn it on just like I always did before, and now I can swap which monitor gets my timeline and my source and record viewer, and which gets all the other tools available to us just by coming down to view, and again, flipping my primary display. Now this display is for my media pool and all of my transition effects. I'll go ahead, flip this back. And there's a brand new view here, which is the dual screen, full screen timeline. Let me go ahead and select that. And you guessed it, this primary display now turns into a full screen timeline. I can get even more room by hiding my audio meters. And what has happened to my record and source monitoring? So now I'll change my primary display. It'll swap these two. And there we go. This is what that other display looks like. I've now got my record and source viewer up here. Plus, I've got my audio tracks exposed, edit index, my media pool. So this has kind of been rejiggered. And now we've got more options available to us in 11.1 when we're working with dual screens. I'm going to go ahead and flip my primary display back to display number one. And I'll turn off dual screen mode. Now, before we get off this movie about UI changes, I do want to point out, if you jump to DaVinci Resolve's website, to their support center, and filter for DaVinci Resolve, you can read the README by clicking this Read More for whatever version of Resolve that is you're looking to download. If I click Read More, I'm looking at the README, what's new in Resolve 11.1. I encourage you to jump into the edit page if you're doing a lot of editing in Resolve 11. There's a ton of new functionality that they've added that wasn't existing when I originally recorded the section on the edit page. I encourage you to come down here and read through this very quickly and see if there are any commands you might find very useful. There's one that I want to point out that I think is really nifty and really useful. I'll go ahead, hide Safari. I'm going to take this clip right here. And what if I just want to swap these two clips? Normally, I'd have to jump it up, put it up to the track above, move this clip and drop it down. Well, there's a new command to do all of that in one very simple move. I'm going to undo. There we go. Now I'm going to hold down command shift and then drag. And what it's going to do is take the clip I'm dragging and just drop it in wherever I tell it to drop in and sliding everything else back. All right, so I've just swapped these two clips around each other. Haven't changed any inner out points. I'm going to undo. What happens if I were to take this clip down here and move it all the way forward? I'll do Command-Shift-Drag. 
And what's happened is it's actually changed this timeline. It's dropped this clip in here and pushed everything else back. So they call it a swap command, but it's really a move a clip and open up the timeline to drop that clip in their command. It's just probably no easier way of saying it than swap. So I'll undo that. You'll see what I mean here. Watch this gap in here as I undo this. All right, so just took this, open this section up in here in order to place that clip in and then pushed everything back up to this point. So that kind of covers the significant user interface changes here in the 11.1 update, but I've got a plenty more to talk about and that'll be coming up in the next couple movies in this chapter.